Hello, this is Valerie Aiello, and you're listening to Idea Diary. Thanks for coming back to my office and hanging out. Today, I wanted to talk about parent companies. So these big companies that own different brands based on what I've been learning lately and studying when it comes to marketing. Apparently, brands sell better when they're kind of an individual thing rather than when you're kind of generic in a way like Samsung, for example, they sell refrigerators, they sell cell phones, they sell TVs. Apparently, it's a better business approach and strategy to go ahead and have a parent company if you want. You can be known or it's not even necessary to be known, but to break down each brand individually. So I just wanted to go over some companies that do that really well. P&G, Procter & Gamble. I wrote down all the brands that they own and just to give me some insight of how they do this and their approach to owning a lot of different products. Let me just go over that. Procter & Gamble own both Loves and Pampers. So they own the same product. They own both brand names. They own Bounce and Downy which are basically, uh, what do you call it? Fabric softeners. They own Cheer, Tide, and Gain. So they own three separate um, laundry detergents. And I think all of those also have fabric softeners. So I feel like they've got the aisle. That's pretty crazy. They own Bounty for paper towels. They own Charmin for toilet paper. They own Puffs for Kleenex. So it's just, very interesting to me that they don't find it necessary to say, oh, we at Puffs, we have the best toilet paper. No, they just decided to, to focus and go down and just say, Puffs, we make Kleenex, Charmin, we make toilet paper, Bounty, we make paper towels. They own Always and Tampax, which I'm not sure if Always has tampons. You know, it's two different products, same category-ish. They own Gillette. They own Braun, which I think are paper towels. They own Venus, which is, so Gillette and Venus, they have the razors for men, the razors for women. They own Secret. They own Old Spice. So they have the deodorant for women, the deodorant for men. They own Head and Shoulders, Herbal Essence, Pantene, which I guess Head and Shoulders kind of a man thing. Um, But regardless, they have the cheap shampoo aisle. Get a big chunk out of that. They own Dawn, which is the liquid dishwashing, you know, if you're washing dishes in the sink. They own Cascade, if you're washing dishes in the dishwasher. They own Mr. Clean, which is, I don't know, sponges and cleaner. They own Swiffer, which is floor sponges in a way. They own Febreze, which I think I... I think I would consider Febreze to be its own thing entirely, air freshener. So they own Crest, which is the toothpaste. They own Oral-B, which is floss and toothbrushes. They own Scope, which is the mouthwash. They own Vicks Vapor Rub and Pepto-Bismol, which are their own categories. And they own Ivory Soap and Olay Soap. They're competing with themselves, which is something that I've always kind of thought making brands and building businesses, that if you already know how to make something well, you should make the cheap version and you should make the expensive version and you should make two separate brands. That was just something out of my own instinct that I always thought was something you should do because if you make something successful, someone's going to copy you. So why not be your own competition? I feel like, P&G does that. Another company I just wanted to go over for a little bit was Coke. So Coca-Cola company, which has the main brand Coke. And then they have Diet Coke, which is the same name. But then everything else is very unique brand. So they have Aha and Fresca, which is sparkling water. They have Barks, which is the root beer. They have Dasani, which is just plain bottled water. They have Fanta, which is the orange or grape soda, different flavors. They have Honest Tea and Gold Peak Tea. They have Minute Maid, which is juice. They have Power Aid. They have Schweppes, which is the ginger ale. 
They have Simply Juice, which is another juice. They have Topo Chico. So they have Aha, Topo Chico, and Fresca. That's a big chunk of the, uh, not a huge chunk, but a good chunk of the sparkling water area of a grocery store. Sprite is its own brand. And then they have Smart Water, Vitamin Water, and like I said before, Dasani. That's pretty good. They they're uh, they're in a couple of different flavors, and each have their own brand, which I think is amazing. I looked at some car companies and which car companies owned which, and the most exciting one was Hyundai, and I'm kind of like loving this Hyundai thing. So Hyundai, which I don't own one, but Hyundai has Hyundai cars, and they also own Kia which I would consider those both kind of cheaper cars. So I don't know why they wanted two cheap car brands, except to think about maybe they wanted the Kia in case the Hyundai went totally out of fashion and nobody wanted that anymore. It was kind of like a backup brand. It was new. It was different. And I think they they were able to maybe test out different styles of cars maybe. But where Hyundai as a main company gets interesting is they own three steel companies. They own five construction companies. They own seven parts companies for, I guess, cars, obviously, but maybe more things. They own four finance companies because that's kind of what they say is when you're going to a dealership, never tell the dealer you're buying in cash because How the dealership really makes money is giving you car loans. So random tip. Continuing on. Sorry for the tangent. Hyundai owns two shipping companies, like ships, meaning like actual ships in the ocean. They own, uh, I think they're a Japan company. So they can ship their own cars to wherever they need their cars to be, which I think is amazing. They own a car software company. It's kind of like outsourcing, but then they're just paying themselves. So they own their software company. They own a technical school. So they teach, um, I guess, future employees in their technical school, which is its own brand. They have a marketing company. So I'm guessing the marketing company's biggest client is Hyundai Cars. They have a car testing company, which maybe could be sort of, you want a, a different company testing your car safety than the actual company making the car. But I get it. Maybe it's like their first round of testing company. They have a company that has farming and land, which I'm guessing they're all of their dealerships. They probably own the land and not sure what the farming parts for, but maybe with all these other different parts and construction and steel companies, they're also making farm equipment. I have no idea, but I just think it's amazing. And they have a hotel and resort company and brand, which I think is amazing. I've always wanted to, if I ever had a big company with employees, have my own hotel and resort so that every time we're doing a work vacation or something, you're also still making money while you're vacationing and all that stuff. I just wanted to go over that list today, lock it in my mind. It was something that I was researching And maybe you found it interesting too and helpful while you are building your own brands and deciding if you want a sister brand or a totally different unique brand or sub brands, which apparently is not the smartest idea. You want to make each product unique in each category, unique in that way. So anyway, that's the show for today and I'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.